Uh, and we'll next uh, move on to project number seven, IHE surgical planning of total knee. I will turn things over to Brandon, Rob, and Jake, who will be presenting this project. All right. Can y'all hear me okay? We can. I think I see CY, who is not on mute. But yes, we can hear you, and we can see your screen. Oh, my kid. The uh, screen is showing? Perfect. Okay, yep. well, good afternoon. Um, to start off, I want to thanks Sim for organizing this hackathon. It's um, been a crazy couple days, especially for Brandon and Rob, but we are very excited to be a part of this. Uh, my name is Jake Hinky, and before we get into what we've actually built, I wanna give some background real quick on the problem that we are trying to fix. So I'm an engineer with the Visionaire Group at Smith and Nephew Orthopedics. Uh, we specialize in patient-specific technology and instrumentation to simplify surgeries and improve patient outcomes. Among other offerings, we design and manufacture cutting guides for total knee arthroplasty. Uh, the cutting guides you can see here in that left image provide benefits to the patient in hospital by being less invasive, reducing surgical time, reducing the number of necessary instruments, um, all of this by allowing the surgeon to plan the entire surgery prior to stepping foot in the OR. And then we have a cutting guide made with the plan already baked into it. So how do we do this? Well, our guides are specific to each patient because they are built from that patient's images, their MRI, their X-ray, allowing for a perfect customized fit to the patient's bony anatomy, as well as a specialized plan to help treat their specific deformity and disease. On top of this, we also have a specialized team consisting of engineers, segmentation specialists, imaging specialists, and et cetera. Okay, um, so sounds like a cool product, but why are we here? We're here because surgical planning um, is complex and messy. In the image below, you can see a small snippet of our process. During the small snippet, a patient, we'll call him Joe. Joe comes in for an MRI to the imaging center. The MRI center will upload his images to the Visionaire website. The radiologist will call or email our imaging specialist to let them know images have been uploaded. The specialist will then review Joe's images and make a determination on whether or not we can use them before calling the radiologist back to let them know. The specialist then has to get in touch with the segmentation team. At some point, an engineer is brought in, back to the radiologist, to the surgeon, so on and so forth. It gets very messy. All this time externally on our website, you will just see an in process. Essentially, the process becomes a black box. As you can imagine, all it takes is one person to mistype, miss an email, not be by their phone, etc. Delays begin to occur. Even with a team as good as ours, mistakes can still happen with a process that is so manual, has so many moving parts, etc. If images are uploaded, nobody notices. They may not be reviewed for a few days. If there is too much motion, Joe may have to come back in for an MRI well after the original is taken, and we can only hope that he doesn't live several hours away. I've seen it happen. Um, this obviously becomes very expensive for us, for Joe, for everyone involved due to all the wasted time tracking down missing data, tracking down people to get images re-uploaded. So our solution, which Brandon's going to walk through here in just a second, is an automated system that will alert or message the appropriate people both internally and externally whenever processes have been completed successfully. We hope to prevent the human error that's inherent in a manual system such as ours, while also removing this black box effect that our customers see and reducing the burden on radiologists and patients who use our product. Our system will also log the movements of each project, including the images and all PHI, which gives us more data, which is always very exciting. Uh, with this data in a full audit trail, we hope to be able to recognize problems as they arise, respond more quickly. Um, this will prevent false acceptance of MRIs with too much movement or any other issue. So hopefully no more Joe having to drive several hours to have another MRI taken. Finally, this will allow us to create and utilize smart systems that are capable of recognizing and responding to alerts and messages. Uh, we hope to have AI generate segmentations automatically and then alert radiologists once they are ready for review, taking out much of the manual process and much of the room for error. Um, with all that said, I'll pass it over to Brandon to get into more detail for us. Well, thanks, Jake. Could you stop sharing your screen so I can share mine? Sweet. 
Okay, so what this looks like at a technical level, this is a pretty much a diagram of how our workflow works. And essentially what we use is the IHE sole message log to be able to, to keep that audit trail of all the events happening. And these sole encodings are encoded as fire JSONs to be able to be streamlined across the entire process. So we start with our with uh, the first message, message, which is the images arrive in the packs, which in our case is gonna be Orthanc. So we send that message that they have arrived. Then the next step is that the segmentation then begins, the AI starts its process, it sends a message, but then there's a checkpoint here to see if, the, if there's an error or not to see if the image can even be uh, segmented or not. Then once that AI completes, it sends that third message, and then we go later down the line and then create that DICOM seg and send it back into the packs and send another message that the segmentations have arrived in the packs. And then finally, we then push that data to the radiologist's workstation and send an HL7 uh, prioritization notification to the clinician to let them know that the, that the segmentations are available in their workstation. So this diagram, you can see how this whole process works from left to right. We send the messages at each process. And this diamond icon here represents a Kafka consumer in place. And why, you may ask, we have this, this is here so we can actually act on the data, such as pull the data into the analytics environment, run the machine learning models, create the DICOM segs, and push it back to other data sources. And so, of course, this process, full, like how it's going to work in production, it's going to be fully automated. But here I'm going to walk you through how it kind of breaks down step by step. So in this Jupyter notebook, um, here I initialize our connection to the Orthanc server. And I have these methods for getting the time to record it into the fire JSON message and also publish our JSON to the soul server to, to keep, keep track of those audit logs. And so we start with having the DICOM data locally. Here I prepare the DICOM data as a zip archive. And before um, we do anything, we got to draft the, the fire JSON message with the soul encoding. So we need to refer to what image we're exactly pushing to the, to the packs. And so here I grab the series instance UID along with the actual value of it. And here I load the JSON template of what this fire JSON looks like. It looks similar to this. Um, here we modify it to record the actual values of the image that's being used. Uh, finally, then we, we send uh, the image to our packs. And this process, you know, it, once it finishes, you know, we can see in our OHIF or Think viewer that the image is there. It, it looks good. So then finally, we then send our sole message to log that event has happened. And here I record the date time that happens the moment, you know, the data has been sent to the server. You know, we then send a post message to the sole server and we get a response saying it's all good. Message is valid and everything looks good. And so pretty much this process happens automatically for every single step in, in the whole workflow to segmentation, to notifying the radiologist. And now I'm going to hand off the rest of the demonstration to Rob Oaks, who can show more of uh, the cool things that happened in the end application. Uh, Rob, are you there? Cool. Yeah. We so cannot hear you. Oh, there we go. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. Um, so, so once. Once the image has been sent to the PACs, as Brandon was saying, um, we, we publish the data out to two sources. First, we send it to the, um, the sole registry so that we have a record at, that is queryable and available. But we send a second copy um, to Kafka so that we can trigger downstream processes and, and allow for things to happen with as little latency as possible. Um, what I'm showing you here is um, the process that happens when we um, push this to the segmentation component. Um, so I, I've implemented a, a, a basic UNet 3D model to, to read these images and, and to create a segmentation mask um, that looks at the bone. Um, it, in turn, I just executed this a couple of minutes ago because I, I figured that for time constraints, it would be better to just show you the results rather than the entire process executing. But it takes about 30 seconds to a minute to process. And um, this is the result of my model. Um, and so I, I'm just showing you the model output, the, 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 the masks and, and the um, volumetric bone rather than the overlay. Um, I'll show you that in a second. But um, a, as you can see, there are issues and problems with my, with my model, right? It is bone-like, which is good. 
but we've also got a, a, a number of locations where we're segmenting outside of the bone or that we've um, over segmented particular structures. In this case, it looks like we picked up either part of the ACL or um, PCL. Um, and here we've got noise and artifacts that are appearing outside of the bone volume. And so this, this brings into um, important relief that, that as you are preparing a, um, any type of uh, surgical technology solution, you, you need to make sure that you are using data that very well represents the anatomy. And, and that means involving outside experts, such as radiologists and others, who can review and provide feedback on this. And so in order to facilitate this feedback, we want to capture the segmentation results, publish those in a, for, in a format that can be used and moved through the clinical care network, um, and then ultimately written um, or verified by the radiologist. And, and, and once it's been verified or rejected, we can then know how to resolve it and, and push and pull back and forth. Um, wonderfully, DICOM provides us with a, a standard called DICOM SEG that allows us to do that. And so um, what I'm, this code that I'm executing now um, enables us to write these segmentation results back to the DICOM, or back to our PACs, at which point another um, fire message will be generated and will be pushed both to the sole registry, but also to a second Kafka consumer that will handle the job of pushing these to the um, radiologist's workstation and notifying them of the need to re review it with priority. Um, we're, we're at time, just uh, great. FYI. So um, with, with that, um, that code is executed, that push has been done, and um, we should now see those results in, in, our, in our viewer as um, another, another segmentation result. And we do. And so um, I, I'm going to stop there and um, yeah. Hey, thank you for your time. I look forward to questions. Absolutely. I have questions from the judges. So once uh, I have one question. So it's 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 great that there you thought about integrating with the radiologist workflow, and I think useful inf useful tools often need that closed loop feedback. So what happens if the radiologist disagrees with the segmentation or needs to modify in some way? Now that you have the data in what presumably is secondary capture, what what happens next? So. Um... Because of the time constraints, I, I can't show you, but um, as it is in a DICOM seg format, it's possible to pull that into a segmentation tool, such as 3D Slicer or um, other utilities, um, immediately load it into a format that can be edited, where it can be cleaned up, modified, and adjusted, and then a second DICOM seg object prepared and sent back to PAX. Um, from which we can then solicit feedback from the radiologist a second time. Um, and once they have either approved or requested additional cleanup, we can iterate on that cycle and, until it meets um, an acceptable criterion. Um, just as, a, as an aside, the fact that we are publishing DICOM SEGs at each step in this process means that we also are accumulating additional data that can be used to retrain the model and to improve its overall performance over time. Hey, is there a sole message that goes back to you from the radiologist or the, the end user that states that things need to be got, gone back, or is that just a standard communication? Um, right now, we do not have that incorporated into kind of this proof of concept, but, but that's an excellent feed, piece of feedback, and it's something that we would very much like to see. Um, one reason that we did not incorporate it here is because usually when we're communicating with the radiologist systems, we do not have control of those. And so um, we don't have, in, in this case, we'd be pushing maybe to Siemens. And, and, and so we would be on their, um, it, it would be on their end in order to implement a, a return message coming back. Hmm. So uh, this one, because it's an event-driven workflow, it's an implicit workflow. And so how do you uh, kick off? So you'd like to do all of the segmentation work on Bob's knee, but you don't when the pack stores Janet's heart or Brad's diagnostic knee, 
you don't want to kick off all of this segmentation. So how do you distinguish the, the initiation of the workflow? So um, it, mostly by including the relevant details um, into the fire message or um, by reading the um, data from the PACS, right? PACS is a queryable system. It's possible for us to receive those messages and then do some type of a check to see, all right, this is a knee. It is a vision error procedure has been ordered. And for that reason, um, we should kick off an auto sec. Okay, so you cross index like the patient information against the visionaire's knowledge of who's actually getting knee uh, surgeries done. That's right. Okay, cool. And 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 tools Thank you. like oh, oh sorry. Oh, no, if you finish this off quickly. Um, to, tools like Siemens um, Fire Registry and um, the Microsoft Fire Registry allow for those for queries to to look into other fire resources relatively easily. So so doing that kind of cross lookup becomes. Um, definitely feasible. Okay, thank you so much, Team 7. That was IHE Surgical Planning of Total Knee.